That's a good thing. Okay, well, I, it appears we're live, so. Hi, Dan. How are we doing? Good. How are you doing? That's a bigger question. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to rest up. <laughs> Getting any sleep? Uh, a little bit. This yeah. Is, this is uh, kind of nice with no noise and no kids. And... Yeah. Where do, where do y'all go? Do you lock them in a room or what? They're upstairs with mom. She's. <laughs> I think she wishes she was down here. And uh, <laughs> she might run for console. <laughs> <laughs> she would switch, I think. So what you're saying conversation tonight, make the meeting last a nice long time for you. <laughs> All right, at 645, I'm going to call the uh, committee of the whole meeting for Tiffin City Council for May 3rd, 2021 to order. Does anyone have anything for the uh, committee of the whole? Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, we have a couple of ordinances this evening that we would like to request suspension on. Uh, the first ordinance is Ordinance 21-39. Uh, that is the ordinance for the city administrator to uh, receive bids uh, for the, the pavement project that is going to be occurring in the second ward on Hudson Street, Oak Street, North Monroe Street, Franklin Street, Clyde Street, and Ash Street. Um, the reason for this is uh, we are, are coming up close on a deadline, and if we're able to get these bids out quickly, we should be able to get uh, better pricing as we did with our, our main uh, paving program this year that has already begun. Uh, we had really good bids on that, so we would like to move forward now with this as well. So if council would consider suspending that, that would allow us to get into those neighborhoods by probably a... I'm going to say 60 days sooner than what we normally would if this would go the full three readings. It may even be more like 90. Uh, so this allows us to get those streets paved much sooner. Uh, the second would be Ordinance 21-40. Uh, and the reason for suspension of that is it is just a reimbursement um, of a grant. So we're asking that that money be placed back into our funds. And last but not least, Ordinance 21-42, uh, that is the $5,000 cost for the uh, the large format plotter in the engineer's office. Their old one died um, and it, it can't be fixed. It's too old. Uh, the technology is just not there to, uh, that's even available to fix a lot of the parts on it. So we're asking suspension tonight so that it doesn't hamper the engineer's work uh, for the next two months while this would normally go through the readings. Okay. Um, who signed 2139 and 2140? Steve? I signed 39. 39? Uh, ben Gillig signed 40. Okay. I'm good with it, Mr. President. All right. Ben? Yes, I'm, I'd be happy to ask for suspension for 2140 and 42. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? We have any motions tonight? Councilman Jones. I don't know if I'm muted or not, evidently not. Uh, let me get my notes here, wherever they are, somewhere. Anyways, I was going to make a motion. Oh, here it is. To edit Ordinance 21-22, improving hazardous pay related to the COVID-19 pandemic to $1,625 dollars per full-time employee and half of that for part-time employees. So that's going to be my motion. Was that the same motion as the last meeting? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Councilman Gillig. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to um, just kind of gauge people's availability for a finance committee meeting. Um, with the Seneca County Council on Homelessness uh, moving forward with purchasing a building for uh, their Transformational Life Center. I wanted to revisit the possibility of um, exploring uh, council sources of funding. Um, just wanted to see what, uh, what times might be available for you good folks. 
Councilwoman Boyle, I know you your work schedule is usually pretty jam packed. Um, are you thinking this week, Ben? Probably early next week. Okay. Um, I could do um, Monday at four if you think that a half hour would be enough prior to the committee at the whole meeting. Or, um, or I could do Wednesday at 5 p.m. or later. Um, Councilman Perkins, do either of those work for you? Yep, you tell me, I'll be there. Let, let's do the Wednesday at five um, okay. and I'll, I'll announce that during, um, during our regular meeting. But Wednesday at five via Zoom would be perfect. Okay. Um, Law Director Howard, do you think you'd be available at that time? Yes, I'm just putting it on my schedule right now. Okay. You're looking at the 12th, Councilman Gillig? I believe so. Let me yeah, check. That's yes, true. that's correct. Yeah, Wonderful. 530 meeting, so I won't be able to join you all most likely for yours then. Okay. Yeah, and no, I want to I want to be involved. Uh, um, I've got a uh, I've got a 545 appointment, so I'll be I can do it for about a half hour. Okay. So I want to. I want to be a part of the, the uh, discussion. Wonderful. Yeah. They just acquired a building, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I had seen that, and I am uh, also going to reach out to Audrey Flood to see if she can join us as well. Good. Mr. President, can I uh, yep. say a couple of things? Um, yeah, did um, we talked about uh, ordinances uh, 21 29, 30, and 31, the street and alley uh, vacation ordinances? What say what? Have we uh, discussed those um, as a part of the agenda? Uh, no, um, they're, they were sent out, they were sent out, uh, does everybody have a copy of those? Uh, yeah, the, uh, I didn't see if there was a, um, I don't know if, Ann, if there was a, an additional agenda that was created that um, included those items, I have not seen yeah. it. Yes, they were inadvertently uh, omitted, but that I resent it this afternoon um, to everyone that receives the packet. So okay. it's, yeah, with the uh, corrected uh, agenda for tonight, with those included. But they were emailed, right, Ann? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everybody should have those on her on her phones. Yeah, I just want to make sure that they know that, you know, that those are up for third reading this evening. Right. Okay. Good. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Councilman Leopard. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to remind... Uh, Members of the City Council on June 15th is the uh, Paul Elkert Make a Difference Day. And I think it'd be a nice tribute to Paul if, uh, if uh, those of us who can join the Elkert family and become Elkerts for a day and help our community. What's that date, Steve? June 15th. What? June 15th. June 15th. Is there a time? Uh, I don't know. I'll get with uh, uh, with some members of the family, find out you know where they're meeting and so forth. Okay. Anything else? Councilman Jones. You're muted. Thank You're you. Muted. There you go. I got it now. Thank you. Uh, we just talked about 29, 30, 31. What's different between them and the original ones? I guess we can talk about it later, but sounds like, was there a difference? No, they just, okay. had, it was a, 
an inadvertent okay. uh, mistake that got left off okay. the agenda. No, there was no change. Anything else? Councilman Jones. Just a, a side issue. I noticed uh, two flashing lights with uh, solar panels on down by the viaduct. One uh, naturally going north, another coming south. That seemed new within the last week. And I thought uh, maybe somebody could share that with the community tonight. That's Yep, that is item number four in my mayor's report, Councilman Jones. Um, I've got a question, Mayor. Are they done with all the work out at the uh, Water Pollution Control Center? Is uh, yes. Huh? Major the majority of major construction, yes. Well, because we had talked about getting a tour out there. Well, I'm either I'm either a psychic this evening or I, or I just plan well because Kevin Hughes is here tonight to give his annual update, and one of the items that he's going to ask you all is a date to schedule a tour to see the facility and all the upgrades. So. You're Man, always I'm a step ahead. Two. You're always a step ahead. Aren't Anybody you? got a third question here? If I can get three in a row, I'm going to buy a lotto ticket after the council meeting. <laughs> got, got, Councilman Ken, Jones. Ken, that was a joke. That was a joke, Ken. <laughs> oh, oh, I do have. <laughs> I don't waste my money on lotto tickets. <laughs> Kevin Hughes may uh, touch on it, but they paid it, repaid most of that and halfway back to the leaf pile and brush pile. And the speed limit is still five miles an hour. I was hoping he would entertain the idea of upping that to about 15. It's hard to go only five. What are you driving around there 15 miles an hour for anyway? Huh? In a hurry to get stone and unload brush. Yeah, I went back there one day. I was going a little bit too fast. One of the guys stopped me and chewed me out. <laughs> he had a right to. <laughs> so they don't want you back there driving too fast. We, we warned Kevin when he got the, uh, the, the street repave back there that the natural speed bumps would be gone and there's no telling what would happen. Yeah. <laughs> it looks nice. It looks, it looks real nice. Anything else? All right. Seeing no hands going up, I'm going to uh, declare the... Uh, Committee of the whole meeting adjourned, and uh, we'll get ready for the uh, regular council meeting. While we have a moment, Councilman Perkins, what can you tell me about that sign behind you? Nothing. I can't tell you anything. No one knows anything. All I've heard is that it's from the 60s. No That's kidding. I so I don't know. Apparently, it was out on somewhere on 53 back in the 60s. So if I could find someone who can tell me that or where, then I'll know more. Why don't you tell me? You always know. <laughs> Not <in this> case. <laughs> it's really neat. Where'd you yeah, find I don't know. That's the best I have. Uh, my wife ran into a sign collector here locally, apparently, and uh, he had that one that he had purchased from, oh, uh, I don't remember who. I don't know. So... If you see a large man on crutches, <laughs> yeah, uh, just me uh, stealing that from you. So just FYI. Uh, Steve said it would uh, possibly have been by the church back in the '60s, but I don't know. You don't. How cool. Yeah. Now I just got to figure out where to put it. Maybe if he doesn't remember who he bought it from, it's stolen. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Mayor wanted to thank you for uh, letting Ollie sit in your chair today. He uh, he was pretty pumped when he got home and told mom all about it. It was a pleasure to meet him. So <laughs> I, I, I I got to meet Oliver Hazard Perry today. Uh, Wait, was... do we get to hear the joke now? Uh, it's not for uh, it's not for oh, okay. PG thirteen. So I don't think it can be on. Perfect. Well, Dan, if it's not PG thirteen, your your six year old son told me the joke. Ah. <laughs> Big dad air on that one. <laughs> Are you getting red? I think you're you look a little red there. <laughs> Better than when he told Father Joe at uh, St. Joe's. So <laughs> gotta gotta teach him when and where to say this joke. There's a time and place for everything, right? Uh, 
<laughs> I'm keeping track of the here and presence tonight, so I know which way to respond. <laughs> All right, I have seven o'clock. I'm going to call the uh, May thirty May third, two thousand twenty-one uh, meeting of Tithon City Council to order. Uh, this evening, will be led in the uh, invocation and the pledge of allegiance by Councilman Perkins. Councilman right. Perkins, thank you. Uh, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Perkins, and good evening to everyone. Thank you. Um, we'll uh, start with the uh, roll call. Councilman Perkins. Here. Councilman Perry. Here. Councilwoman Boyle. Here. Councilman Gillick. Hobbled, but here. <laughs> Councilwoman Yanatuno. Here. Councilman Jones. Present. And Councilman Leopard. Present. Let the uh, record show that all seven members of uh, Tiffin City Council were uh, present. Next, we'll uh, hopefully everybody had an opportunity to uh, look over the minutes from our last meeting. Are there any additions, corrections? Or deletions. Okay, seeing none, without objection, uh, the meeting, uh, the minutes will stand approved as presented. Uh, next item, uh, committee reports. Finance committee, committee, uh, Councilman Gillig. No report at this time, Mr. President, but I would like to announce a finance committee meeting for next Wednesday, May the 12th at 5 p.m. via Zoom. The purpose of the meeting will be to discuss potential city funding for the Transformational Life Center from the Seneca County Coalition on Homelessness and any other business that may come before the committee. Thank you. Long Community Planning, Councilwoman Boyle. No report at this time, Mr. President. Thank you. Materials and Equipment, Councilman Jones. No report at this time, Mr. President. Thank you. Personnel and Labor Relations, Councilman Perry. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Recreation and Public Property, Councilman Perkins. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Street Sidewalks and Sewers, Councilman Leopard. Thank you, Mr. President. Street Sidewalk and Sewer Committee meeting was held Monday, April 19th, 2021 via Zoom. Attending were committee members Stephen Leopard, Don Yonatuno, Ken Jones, and Zach Perkins. Mayor Mods, Law Director Howard, Council President Rich Pope, City Administrator Dale Thornton, and City Engineer Matt Watson. Leopard called the meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. and announced that the purpose of the meeting was to discuss Mayor's request for legislation 21-8, an easement at Tiffin Metal Products and any other business presented. Engineer Watson explained to the committee that Tiffin Metal Products is expanding the storm water management storm water management plan is required. The basin that is proposed will be on the south side of the property line and 15 foot off the front edge of Wall Street. The plan is necessary because more than one acre of land is being disturbed and the, and the city needs an agreement in place to be able to access the property for inspection and maintenance purposes of the retention basin. Councilman Jones asked, asked if a fence around the detention pond is required. Engineer Watson explained that this is actually a stormwater quality basin, not a detention pond. This is a very small structure and has the appearance of a ditch that is so lined 
and the water percolates and cleanses prior to being fed into the storm sewer by a pipe. Water Director Howard asked how the engineering science differs between a detection pond and a water, water quality basin. Engineer Watson explained that a water quality basin operates, operates much like a septic system. Councilwoman Yanantuno introduced a motion to authorize the law director to prepare legislation as outlined in RFL 21-8 to create an easement between the city and Tiffin Metal Products for inspection and maintenance of the water quality basin. The motion was seconded by Council Perkins and approved by a vote of 4-0. Councilman Jones shared with the committee an ongoing complaint from a resident concerning a sewer-related problem and asked that ask the committee to come involved. Law Director Howard's, Howard stated it was more appropriate to refer the concern to the city administration as this is a legislative matter. This is not a legislative matter. Councilman Jones will forward the information to the mayor and city administrator. No further business, meeting adjourned at 6.44 p.m. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Leppard. Economic Development and Downtown Planning, Councilwoman Yanatuno. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, next, uh, Committee of the Whole. I'd like to announce a Committee of the Whole meeting for next Monday, May 10th, uh, via Zoom at 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is going to be to discuss um, Ordinances 21, 2133, uh, 2134, 2135, and um, 2132. Um, those are ordinances that deal with uh, intersections and removal of uh, uh, traffic control devices. Um, I've had some thought about this, and I think that First of all, the city hired an engineering firm to do a lot of background work on a study to uh, provide some uh, recommendations to, uh, to the council. Uh, those recommendations were reviewed by the uh, traffic, uh, traffic committee and they agreed with all of the recommendations. And there's been a lot of discussion. I know there's some, um, some um, discussion in the uh, especially in the second ward. Um, and I think that we need to come together. Uh, the traffic, uh, traffic committee is going to also be involved in this meeting Monday. And I think that we need to have a discussion where all the information can be presented at one time and we can all review it so that we all know exactly what um, we're talking about and what's going on. So uh, that's my thought. Any questions about that? Okay, Councilman Perry. Councilman Perry. Yeah, uh, I will. I'll still be at work, so I won't be able to attend uh, at that time. But um, I can always go back uh, on the on the Zoom meeting and, and rewatch it too. So. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, and also, anything that else comes up through the committee. So. Next, we have uh, reports to the officers. His Honor. Mayor Aaron D. Montz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, pleasure to be here this evening. Hard to believe we're into May already. And um, the weather's a little better than our last meeting. If you recall, we had the snowstorm uh, and now at least it's rain, but still pretty gloomy and much more chilly than what you'd expect for May. Uh, anyways, I'll start off as I always do this evening uh, with a little brief financial update, uh, keeping track of where things are at. Um, we finished a very strong month of April here at the city. Uh, in fact, we were ahead of last year's total, which of course was skewed significantly because of the shutdown and the fact that the income tax filing deadline was extended significantly. However, we were ahead of last year's total by about 219,000, which is a 26% increase year over year when compared to April of 2020. Um, overall, uh, previous April that you can compare is more of a normal April would have been all the way back in 2019. Uh, that was with a normal income tax filing deadline. And we were only about $141,000 behind that. Uh, that coupled with the fact that our income tax deadline is extended again this year till May, um, I think it's very solid numbers. 
Uh, for the year, we are ahead of 2020 uh, by about $325,000, which amounts to 9.4%. Uh, so very positive news. Uh, I would expect to see us ahead as well next month in the month of May. But then I think we're going to see the tables turn po uh, possibly in June and possibly also in July uh, since those were the two months that were that income tax returns were coming back in and things started to get back open. So I think once we get to the end of the month of July, we will have a very solid picture of where exactly we are financially here in 2021 compared to a normal regular year of sorts. Uh, but overall, the financial numbers are tremendous uh, and all very positive news. Uh, here on the city's financial health. Um, to report on uh, COVID, uh, there are currently 64 active cases in Seneca County. Uh, that was as last Friday. Uh, we have currently 29.5% uh, of individuals in Seneca County have been fully vaccinated and 34.2% uh, have received at least one dose. Um, I am told that there are a lot of unused vaccines at the health department. So if anyone is interested in getting a vaccine, please call, make an appointment. Uh, they can get you right in and get those vaccines taken care of. They're also doing clinics at Mercy Hospital every week, um, as well as scheduling some of our retailers that have pharmacies here in the community. Uh, the good news to report, the fire department uh, reported Tiffin Fire and Rescue had zero uh, COVID-19 related transports in the last couple of weeks. So very positive to see that uh, of the cases we have, they are not very severe at this time. Uh, I want to congratulate Officer Eric England. Uh, Officer England was promoted to detective and he is beginning in the detective bureau this week. So congratulations on your, your uh, promotion, Officer England to detective England. Uh, it, it came up in Committee of the Whole, but uh, through the Traffic Safety Committee and the administration, we de decided that we are going to uh, uh, add additional flashing lights near the viaduct here in Tiffin. Uh, these are LED flashing beacons that have been put in in both directions now as you near the viaduct. Uh, the flashing lights are still active on the viaduct itself, and we have switched out all of the signs as you're coming close to the viaduct and on the viaduct to um, the, these new ultra fluorescent uh, neon type of signs to try to draw, draw attention to it. So um, that's really uh, what we feel is far and away above and beyond what is necessary. Uh, but we decided it was best to make one more effort to see what could be done to uh, try to prevent those, those couple of trucks that we have every year that still are running into the viaduct and not paying attention to the the, the five signs and two or three flashing lights that we have in the direction. So we're hoping maybe a couple more flashing lights and additional signs uh, will help. Uh, but if not, um, at the end of the day, they need to pay attention and they probably should invest in the, the truck driver GPS that cost a couple hundred dollars uh, that would tell them that there is low clearance there and their truck can't fit. Uh, but we wanted to uh, make one more last ditch effort to see if we could try to subside some of those strikes uh, on the viaduct. I'm pleased to report the Sean Avenue project, uh, the expansion of Sean Avenue has been completed. Uh, luckily for, uh, for us, it came in a little under budget. Uh, the, the manufacturer is in the process of moving into that facility and they'll be up sometime this year with a lot of new jobs and a new factory here in town. So very positive news uh, coming out of that Sean Avenue project. Uh, hard to believe, but street paving began already last week in the community. Several streets were already paved. Uh, there were several more that they were able to at least get the milling down on. Uh, now, if we could only get the weather to cooperate, if you look at the forecast uh, for, I, I think, about 10 or 11 of the next 14 days, there's rain in the forecast, which is not good for laying pavement. And a few of these days, we even have temperatures uh, forecast to uh, only be highs in the upper 50s and lows at night close to the frost point, which also is not good for paving. So uh, it could there, there could be a pause for a few weeks in paving. Uh, before we see additional here in the in the community with uh, with just the the uncooperative weather that we had, but needless to say, we are going to get through that full uh, list of paving this year, 1.6 million dollars plus, which is the largest paving budget that we've had. Uh, I also want to update everyone. Uh, Kathy knows this, but her finance office are doing a nice job. They're working towards developing an online sewer. Uh, paying system that we could have. Uh, the hope is that we'll have it up and running by the beginning of 2022 so that residents can actually go online and pay their sewer bills. 
Uh, right now we offer, you can mail in your sewer bill, you can call in and pay your sewer bill, uh, or you can have an auto deduct from your bank account. The thing that we don't have currently is where you can go online at your leisure and just pay it from your credit, your debit card, or, or et cetera. So uh, there are many residents that would like that feature. So we've decided to explore those possibilities. They're working on it. And we hope by the start of 2022, we can have that online uh, feature up and running. Speaking of sewers, uh, unfortunately, we had two sewer lines in the last week that have collapsed here in the city. Uh, I would not say they are, are huge collapses, but anytime there's a collapse in our mainline sewer, it's a problem. So because of that, we have pumps that are running uh, around the clock. Uh, so with that, uh, I know we are asking council for additional funding to fix these collapses. We have money in the budget that we budget every year uh, for sewer repair work. The problem is uh, these two collapse um, sewer lines are going to take up all of that money uh, and possibly even more. We're still working on the estimate. Regardless, we're going to need additional funds appropriated into those lines because even if we are able to cover these two, there will not be money in the case of the next emergency if we have any sort of a sewer line collapse. So uh, we will be coming to council asking for additional funding once the, uh, the estimates are into us so that we can have a better understanding of exactly what the costs are. So the sewer is still functioning. Our pumps are running just fine. Uh, but obviously that gets quite expensive. And if there are any issues with the pumps, uh, we have to send crews out overnight and on overtime. Uh, so we ideally would get this issue fixed as soon as possible. So uh, we will be coming to you all here in the near future for money. Uh, that was on, one of those was on Ann, and then the other one was on Bryden Court uh, out near in the Lincoln Road area. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Tiffin Parks and Recreation Department, as well as the Tiffin Seneca Public Library and NOPEC. Uh, those entities came together, as well as some private donations, to uh, put in Tiffin's first storybook trail. Uh, this is at, at uh, Shekelhoff Park. Uh, as you walk with uh, yourself, your family, your dog, whatever you may uh, take for a walk at Shekelhoff, um, every uh, uh, several uh, yards, there is a, a stand and it has another page in a book. So as you walk this uh, path, you're able to read a book. Uh, it's geared more on, on books, of course, for families with children, uh, lots of neat little pictures in it. And their plans are to change the book out at least once a month uh, so that folks out there who are taking their walk can read the book um, and, and use a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of their good brain cells and, and thinking skills as they're reading books, uh, enjoying the walking trail out at Shekelhoff Park. So thank you to the library, NOPEC, and the Tiffin Parks and Recreation Department. Speaking of NOPEC, the city administrator uh, has switched over some additional accounts uh, that the city of Tiffin has for our city electric uh, to NOPEC. And by doing so, if electric, if electric usage stays the same with those accounts, it's going to save us somewhere around $14,000 annually. Uh, that is, of course, if we use the same electricity as we did last year, uh, which typically our electricity use uh, remains fairly steady here at the city. Uh, so we expect to see somewhere in the neighborhood of $14,000 a year saved in electric costs uh, because of the city administrator, Dale Thornton's proactive work with NOPEC at switching those accounts over from AEP accounts to NOPEC accounts. So uh, yet another way, we know NOPEC gives grants back to the community that we've used for all sorts of great things. They sponsor events. And now on top of that, they're saving us just in these couple of accounts over $14,000 a year. Dale has already switched out some of our other gas and electric, if you recall in previous years. Uh, just off of my head, I bet we're up to the close to $40,000, if not more annually now that we're saving uh, because of switching city accounts over to NOPEC. So they've been just tremendous to work with. Uh, also, we've had a lot of questions asked about East Green, what's going on at East Green. Um, the, uh, the East Green Board of Directors has let me know that uh, they are going to be installing a recirculating system for the splash pads so that it is not drawing on all water that then just goes right into the sewer. It's going to recirculate similar to how a pool does. Uh, the installation of this will begin in late June um, of this year, uh, and they do plan to have the splash pad open. It just is all dependent on what the construction schedule is like and if they get ahead, if they get behind, but the splash pad, they do plan to have the splash pad open this year, and they're hopeful that they're able to have some concerts and events at that site as well. A uh, couple of business congratulations. I want to congratulate uh, Jeff Snavely and Best 
uh, announcing their location here in downtown Tiffin. They're going into where Fat Cakes was uh, previously located across from the Ritz Theater. Uh, Best is, is specializes in breakfast food and street tacos. Uh, so that will, the, the plan at this point, they're hoping to open on May the 18th. I also want to congratulate CrossFit Tiffin who held their ribbon cutting and grand opening last week. Great crowd out for attendance. Uh, huge facilities. They're located where Jumpers Wild used to be. And then also I want to congratulate Unbox Treasures. Uh, they had their opening uh, this past Saturday on May the 1st, and they went into where JT's Bagel Bar used to be located um, just across from St. Joe's Church. Uh, if you recall, JT's Bagel Bar moved into the Laird Arcade building in downtown Tiffin. And with that, it opened up a new storefront. So uh, uh, Unbox Treasures has moved in there and they opened this past Saturday. Uh, I know the press release was put out, but I want to remind everyone that the Tiffin Seneca Economic Partnership is hiring for the position of an operations manager. Uh, that information is available on their website and also on the uh, uh, on their social media for that position. Uh, the wages start off anywhere. It could be a, anywhere from 33,000 to 40,000 a year for that position based off experience and qualifications. Uh, they of course handle a lot of the city's economic development work by contract. Speaking of which, I will be meeting with David Zach in the next week uh, to discuss the contract the city has with TCEP expires in the near future. So if any council members have anything they would like to see changed in that contract or new proposals, please get them to me, preferably in writing, uh, so that I know exactly what it is that you want me to communicate to uh, their president and CEO, David Zach. Uh, but it is expiring here in the very near future. So that legislation will be coming soon to city council. Uh, David and I are meeting next Monday to go over the current contract and discuss any changes that either party would like uh, with it. A uh, couple of uh, reminders, the downtown chocolate walk is this coming Saturday on May the 8th, so the day before Mother's Day. There are still a few tickets available, I am told. Uh, they have sold the vast majority of them, uh, $25 a person. I believe there's 25 different stops in downtown Tiffin. You get a piece of chocolate at each stop. Uh, so you'll probably, I, I think, isn't it right uh, that there's caffeine and chocolate, so you'll probably be on a pretty good uh, caffeine and sugar kick by the end of it, uh, but the chocolate walk is a ton of fun. I've done it in the past. Uh, just a really good event to go out and see our businesses, get some chocolate, and just get out and see people's faces because I think we all miss doing that over the last year. And then I do want to remind uh, council that I will be on vacation and out of the office on May the 14th uh, through May the 23rd. Uh, so that will be the, the second trip that I've taken that I've left the state since October of 2019 because of the pandemic and I can't wait. Uh, first official vacation since October of 2019. So um, we're going to keep our fingers crossed. It seems like every time I, I do leave, something happens uh, from windstorms to all kinds of things. So uh, wrap yourselves in bubble wrap, do what it takes. Just keep the city safe, please, while I'm gone for the week. Uh, so uh, I have two presenters this evening. So first off, I'll ask if there are any questions for me before I turn it over to our presentations for tonight. Councilman Perkins. Yeah, I just had one question. Is there, um, I know I've seen the map of the repaving. Is there anywhere that the residents can find a list? Um, I would have to look if we actually have the, the list published online or if it's just the map of the streets. Um, I, I know we've got it, so. Uh, yeah, I've seen it too. I just can't seem to yeah. know where it's at. So I didn't know if we could get something that was like easy for them to find, so. Yeah, if uh, if you would, would like, we could always put that that actual list on our uh, on our website um, okay. and, and just plop the list on there. Because I know I've got it because I use it in all of my State of the City presentations. It's one of the, the slides on there with the list of streets. But yeah, it should be relatively easy. So uh, we'll see if we can get with Nick Dutra and Matt Watson and get that on the website this week, just with the actual list of streets. Uh, I know it was put out in a press release. I just don't know. I know it had all the streets listed, but I don't know yeah. what it was. And to try to have the resident uh, that's asked you to hunt for that, we'll just put it, put the list on the website and make it a little easier um, to find. All right, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? All 
Okay. okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, two presentations. The first this evening was uh, Ben Cutler and some folks from Columbia Gas. They're here to go over the, the gas line replacement project that they have here in the, the south side of town. The vast majority of it uh, is in the fourth ward. So I'm going to start bringing them in. Uh, I've got Ben on his way in and Ben will have to tell me the names of his other folks here. I see a few names I don't recognize in our other room, I'm, I, but I don't want to assume that those are his others. Ben, uh, you should be on. Uh, it's up to you if you turn your, your video on. There you are. Um, and you'll have to unmute. And then if you could let me know, do you have any other associates you need me to let in the room? Yeah, good evening. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, yes, if you could please let in. We should have three other folks in the lobby. So uh, Nate Bining is our engineer. Uh, Mark Wright and Jay Zembic from construction and Sherry Pastula from public affairs. So if you could let those folks in, uh, that would be terrific as well. If you don't hey, mind. Sherry, you said Mark. Yep. It just says Mark. So I'm hoping this is the right Mark. <laughs> Probably is. And what were the other two names that you said, Ben? Or was there Jay, my Jay or John Zembic? There is and uh, John Zenvik. So Jay or okay. John, you're on there. Uh, you'll need to change your name to something we can recognize. <laughs> and then Nate Binding as well. Should be under Nate or Nathan. And there is none of that either. I do have, uh, I have someone that is just a bunch of numbers. It's, I don't know if it's a, a, a U-boat from the war. It's U-462. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, don't, I don't know who that is. And we also have a call-in number that I don't know that's possible. Okay. I guess. Well, I think... Uh, that's okay for right now. If, if uh, those folks can hear us, if they could change their names, that's fine. If not, we've got Mark on, okay. uh, which is, which should be more than sufficient. So, okay. um, but uh, okay to get started. Yeah. Take it away, Ben. Okay, great. And then also like to, if possible, potentially share my screen, but I think I can do that from here as well, based on my control panel. So, um, so, you know, first and foremost, I uh, want to say a quick thank you to Mayor Monts and, uh, Dale and the rest of Tiffin Council for having us on this evening. Uh, my name is Ben Cutler. I'm the uh, public affairs specialist uh, for Columbia Gas covering our uh, Lake Erie region, which includes Tiffin. Um, also from the team, we've got uh, Mark Wright, uh, one of our frontline leaders for construction. Um, and then uh, Sherry Pastula from public affairs. And then if they are able to join uh, Nate Binding, our engineer and Jay Zembic, one of our other construction leaders uh, who might be dialed in as well. So you'll likely hear from some of these folks as we get started. Um, my plan is to give a quick 10 to 12 minute presentation um, covering the key points of our upcoming pipeline replacement project in Tiffin, what we're doing, why we're doing it, what to inspect. You know, obviously many folks on council are probably familiar with our projects since we've done a good amount of work in Tiffin previously, but always think it's good to give a high level, level overview. And obviously every project's always a little bit different. Um, if okay, uh, we'd prefer to take questions at the end of the presentation, just so we can get through everything. Um, and, uh, but if, of course, if you need to ask something in the middle, feel free to just come off mute. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm going to share my screen uh, as we go. It's just uh, some photos to supplement what we're going to be talking about. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started. But thanks again for having us. And hopefully, let's see, can folks see my screen? Yes, I can okay, see perfect. it. Okay, good. Perfect. And if for some reason I cut out or anything like that, just let me know or speak up and I'll, I'll call back in. I know that happens from time to time. So. Um, so anyway, uh, like I said, here to talk about our uh, pipeline replacement project in Tiffin. Uh, it's called the Ellis Street Project, and like uh, uh, Mayor Mont said, it's primarily in the in the fourth ward, uh, fourth ward, which I believe is a Councilman Perry. Um, so essentially, let me see if I can get this to scroll down. Okay, so essentially, what we're doing here is we're replacing our aging infrastructure that's been in the ground for decades with new plastic pipe. Uh, our older gas lines have served us well, but just like any infrastructure like roads or bridges, they deteriorate over time and the cost to maintain and repair is actually more than putting in the new more modern pipe. The plastic pipe we're installing also has several uh, enhanced features uh, like added safety benefits, added safety measures. It has a longer lifespan than the older pipe and also the ability to expand and contract with shifting temperatures and bend to the contour of the earth. earth. So all in all, it's just a much more state-of-the-art pipe that we're putting in. Uh, and as a result, uh, the plastic will require less maintenance and upkeep moving forward. Um, so once we're done with this project, you know, there's always the chance for emergencies or hit lines 
but we should see less of us from a general maintenance and, and, and upkeep point of view. And ultimately the goal of this project is to maintain the same safe, reliable and efficient natural gas delivery service residents depend on in Tiffin each and every day. Um, and so in terms of the general area where we're gonna be working, I put up a map, I put a map up on the screen. Uh, for those who cannot see, we'll be on portions of Washington, Sycamore, Ella, Circular, Jefferson, Martha, Pinecrest, Charlotte, Maine, and Monroe, all in the fourth ward. Uh, we'll be installing roughly 13,200 feet of new plastic pipe uh, and serving uh, roughly 230 residences and or businesses on this project route. In terms of the project duration, um, we're just getting underway this week and likely looking at about four months of work. You know, we, we never like to lock too far into a time frame. There's because there's always factors that could skew that shorter or longer, but that's a good estimate and we'll keep everybody updated as we go. Um, now, in looking at the map, uh, you know, a number of folks asked us on our, pu our virtual public meeting last week why the map looks like this and why it's skewed and why we only select a certain number of streets. And, you know, kind of the easy answer to that is Nate uh, Binding, our engineer and his team, they take a look at the, our infrastructure footprint and Tiffin and identify areas that priority areas that need to be replaced. So, um, you know, the areas that aren't highlighted on here, they might not need to be replaced or like in the case of Sycamore Street between Union and Ella, we already did that in 2019. So we kind of dance around a little bit, but that's kind of why it's, it's a little bit, you know, a street here, a street there, a section here, a section there. And if something's not on here, it could potentially uh, be in a future project as well. Um, you'll likely see our contractor Mid-Ohio Pipeline completing most of the work for us on this project. Um, but we'll always have a Columbia gas supervisor on site as well. And we always encourage folks to ask for ID from any of our employees or contractors if they have questions. Um, Mark Wright, if you're able to come off mute, before I jump into the general phases of the project, would you be able just to introduce yourself quickly and maybe just add anything on generally high level about the project before we get into the phases? Sure, are you able to hear me, Ben? Yes, sir. Hey, as always, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with the council members. Thank you for the invite. Um, ben, you did a fantastic job. It's uh, very similar to projects that we've done in the past. Uh, although we won't be in the downtown area, we'll be on just on the skirt of downtown South Side. So uh, we're happy for that. The downtown section was a little rough and tough for us to get through, but uh, in general, the project is about the same as it was last year. We'll be eliminating, as Ben had said, some older aged pipe, higher risk pipe with the new plastic. And uh, as he stated also, we'll, we anticipate about three, three to four months for the project. But Ben, you're doing fantastic. I'll just let you continue as is. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor, if you're able to, uh, Nate Binding informed me that he's dialed in as that one, two, eight, nine, six, four uh, numbers. If you're able to admit him, uh, Feel free to go ahead, go ahead, please. But if if not, no worries. But he is uh he that is him on that U number. The U four six two two four something or other. Uh, one two eight. Nine. I have a four one nine two six six number. Yep, that's him. Four one nine two one two six six. So okay. yeah, feel free to admit him. Thank you. Yep. He uh, he's got a yes. Thanks. Sorry about that. Could be in. He'll just have to hit. I think it's star six uh, to okay. unmute himself if he needs to speak. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're okay, right. so let's kind of get into the meat of this a little bit, talk about the phases of our, our project. Um, so first phase is pre-construction, which is well already well underway here in progressing through the project. This is where we mark all the facilities. So that's why you see the different color flags and, and so on and so forth. During this phase, we're also doing really important camera work. So the above ground camera work, we're, we're videoing the whole construction path. And that's a really important point of reference for us when it gets to restoration. So when we finish the project, we can go back to that camera and see what the area looked like beforehand um, and make sure that we can restore it uh, back to its original condition. We're also videoing the sewers in the underground. Uh, and, the, and that reason we do that is because we need to clear the, those facilities in order to be able to bore the new pipe, um, which is obviously much less invasive excavating. Um, so, uh, you know, you'll see camera, you know, camera crews out there right now. 
Um, you'll see flags, you'll see markings and so on and so forth. And we always ask residents if they don't mind to, to please leave those flags and markings in for us. They're really important points of reference for our crews. And the last thing that we wanna do is, is, on, is you know, inadvertently hit an underground facility. Um, so once we're you know through pre-construction or pre-construction has moved through an area, uh, we'll get into mainline installation and that's what we're starting this week. Um, the main line is the line that feeds, you know, all the homes in a particular area. Main line install generally occurs on one side of a street and the right of way. Um, you know, the, the side of the street, we scope out sides of the street to install on, but that can always change when we get out there. So, you know, if folks ask, we are happy to say what side of the street we'll be installing main on. But again, that could switch um, depending on the area. It might be the, the east side of the street in one section or the west side of the street in the other. Um, uh, and where we can, we do our best to directional bore. Uh, like I said, this is less invasive excavating. However, in scenarios where we can't, we don't get good camera work and we can't clear the facilities, um, we may have to open trench. Um, and again, just know that if we do have to open trench in certain areas, it's always out of safety. Um, you know, we don't want to, you know, bore without knowing what's underneath of it underneath and accidentally hit something and cause larger damage. So the goal is always to, to directional bore, um, but in some scenarios or in some locations, we may have to open cut. So I'm going to take a quick pause again and see if Mark could come off mute and just uh, fill in any gaps on uh, the mainline phase of the project. Sure. Um, I think, Ben, it's worth noting that generally we like to start at one end of the project and work to the other direction or, you know, in a straight line across the project. But our understanding there's some paving that's taking place and some hard surface restoration that the city has going on in ODOT. So we are planning on hitting those areas first, finish our work up so that we will not try to be disturbing any of that new paving or concrete work. So uh, for those residents that may be listening, if you see us skipping from one street to the other, it's because we're trying to stay ahead of the city's work and uh, street work. That's all I have, Ben, thanks. Mark, we really appreciate that uh, with the city because we've got some big time paving projects this year and you guys working with the engineer's office on that, we really appreciate your willingness to do that. It, it's gonna save us a lot of time and heartache. Absolutely, not a problem. Thanks, Mayor, and another addition here. So Jay Zembeck, our construction leader is the U46246. So uh, feel free to admit him as well. So thank you. Appreciate uh, that. Yep, uh, he is on his way in. Great, thanks. And that should be everybody. So no, no more additions. Right, good. Our end, so thank you. So uh, once hey, the main line- I'm sorry, Ben, I was just thinking it is worth adding that we are having pretty good success so far with the sewer video. So the first start of the project, we anticipate doing a lot of boring, which is good. So that's, that's not as much excavating and, you know, and disturbance of the um, yards and whatnot. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we continued on that. Thanks, Mark. Good, good context. Appreciate that. Uh, so once the main line is in, or most of the main line is in, in, in and gassed up, uh, we'll move on to the service line replacements for individual properties. Uh, this process takes about two to four hours per property with service disruption occurring for just a portion of that time. Um, we'll, con we'll actually contact residents and business owners in advance to schedule the service disruption and relight appointments at a time that's convenient. So this, this is really the second phase of the project and uh, it's done via appointment um, by and large. So, you know, especially with businesses who might be on the route, if we have a restaurant or something like that, that might be very dependent on gas, um, you know, we'll, we'll work with them to schedule the service line appointment at a time that's convenient, whether they're closed on a Monday or a Friday, whatever works, you know, we'll, our coordinator will work, you know, hand in hand uh, to make sure um, that we can schedule it at a time that's convenient. Um, during this appointment, uh, we may also, we will also relocate indoor meters outside. Um, this is safer and provides easier access for first responders. Uh, we'll, as we always say, we'll do our very best to work with residents to ensure we can put a, a, their meter in a location that they, they like. Um, we have some standards and guidelines that we have, we have to adhere to, but, uh, you know, 99 out of 100 times we're able to come to a good agreement um, with, the, with the resident or homeowner about the meter location. And again, we are mandated to move those meters outside, but we'll work with folks as best we can uh, to make sure it goes in a good spot. 
Um, after the service line is installed, and in some cases the meter moved, uh, re we'll reconnect properties to the new system, conduct a safety check, and relight pilots and appliances. This will obviously involve coming into the home. I know, you know, there's some general concern about folks inside homes with COVID, and I'm going to cover that at the at the way end. Um, so uh, I'm going to table that for a moment. But uh, Mark uh, or Jay, if you're if you're on now, anything else that either of you gentlemen would like to add on service line appointments? I have nothing to add, Ben. You did a good job there. Ben, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, Jay. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, just so you know, and I, I think we've got a history of this, we're very willing to work with residents that have um, different hours of, of their work schedule. So scheduling something after hours is not going to be an issue for us. So if, if anyone raises that, that concern, we're more than happy to work with their schedules. Yeah, good point, Jay. And even with folks on vacation too, we'll work, we'll work around it. You know, we do have to get to every home, but we have some flexibility with when and how we do it. Um, so I think uh, as we kind of get to the end here, I want to spend a minute on restoration. Um, I think this is kind of the issue that there's generates the most concern on any project. Um, so our restoration work really comes in two phases. Uh, we'll be conducting temporary restoration as the project goes to ensure the area is safe and accessible. Uh, the temporary restoration may include patches on streets and sidewalks and filling up holes in yards and straw for erosion control. Um, we we want to remind everybody and you know folks on council and residents, temporary restoration is exactly what it sounds like. It's temporary. It's meant to ensure the area is safe and accessible. Uh, it may not look the best. It may not match, um, but it's 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 temporary. Um, we can't do the final restoration right away because we still have to come back and do the service lines. So it doesn't make sense for us to pull, pour asphalt, pour concrete, and then potentially have to come back and disrupt again. So we're going to do temporary restoration as we go. Um, and then as the project nears completion in different areas, we'll begin the process of permanent restoration. Um, permanent restoration includes cement and asphalt pouring on hard surfaces, leveling, laying down topsoil, reseeding, replacing disturbed plants and flower beds on soft surfaces. Um, again, we just really ask folks to be patient with us on restoration. Um, we know it's frustrating. We know it can lead to some anxiety um and apprehensiveness but we you know it's our privilege to work in tiffin um we promise to get everything restored um back to its original condition that's why we take the time to do the, the above ground camera work um and we will get to it you know it just takes some time and i know we've had some might have had a project in the past where we kind of finished toward the end of the year and we weren't able to get back and do the permanent restoration or finish the permanent restoration until maybe the spring. But with the timing of this project, we anticipate being able to do all, you know, most or all of the, the permanent restoration, um, bearing anything unforeseen. And, you know, we did have a couple of folks ask us on the public meeting, you know, can you give me a timeline for permanent restoration, the timeline between temporary and permanent. And while we'd love to be able to do that, we don't want to set unrealistic expectations and things can change and evolve as project goes. So all we're saying right now is just, you know, we promise we'll get to the, the, temp the permanent restoration. Um, just ask folks to be patient with us and we'll provide regular updates as the project goes on timelines. Um, Mark or Jay, could you please come off mute and add anything I might have missed on restoration? I think you covered it well, Ben. I agree, Ben. Good job. Okay. Thanks. Okay. One last point before we conclude here. Um, just want to touch on COVID for a second. Um, you know, we're obviously conducting this work amid a global pandemic. Uh, our crews adhere to guidelines from the CDC to keep folks safe and healthy. Um, obviously, it's important work. That's why we're continuing to do it uh, during this unprecedented time. Um, you know, we're wearing masks, practicing social distancing, temperature checks, cleaning work services, proper PPE. Um, we would, um, you know, if, if council members hear from, you know, constituents about folks coming into homes, um, just, just have them let us know if they have a concern when we reach out to get that appointment scheduled. Um, we're happy to work with residents as best we can, you know, whether that means leaving us a key or having a relative or a neighbor over, we wanna keep everybody comfortable as we go. So, you know, anyone that has concerns if they're immunocompromised or haven't gotten a vaccine yet, we are adhering to those safety protocols, but we'll, we'll work to make everyone comfortable as we go through this phase of the project. So, um, and on one thing on contact information, you know, as we go, I think I uh, reached out to Councilman Perry individually to introduce myself and just give my contact information. Um, we always encourage folks on the project to go out and talk to members of the crew if they have questions or concerns. 
Um, you know, folks can also reach out to me directly, um, you know, either via email, phone, or Facebook. I'm pretty active on Facebook. So just whatever it is, just keep in touch with us. If there's concerns, if there's questions, if there's appreh apprehension, just, just let us know and, and keep in touch with us and, you know, we'll keep in touch with you. So uh, I know, Mayor, you shared that message on Facebook last week. So thank you for doing that. I uh, appreciate that. But we'll continue to provide updates as we go. I know Nate Bining from Engineering will keep in touch with uh, City Engineer Matt Watson as well on developments. So I think between all those touch points, we should be covered. But always encourage folks to go out and talk to members of the crew if they have questions or to reach out to me. So before we open it up to questions, um, Mark, Jay, Nate, Sherry, anything else that I might have missed that you all would like to add before we take questions? I, this is Jay, Mayor Monson, Council. I would like to say that in 10 years of, of being in the construction department, um, Matt has been wonderful to work with, your, your city engineer. Um, we work with a lot of municipalities and there's many challenges, but Matt is always very willing to work with us and we really appreciate that on the Columbia side. So thank you. Yeah, Thanks. Matt is Matt is a rock star here at uh, at City Hall and in the engineer's office. So um, we appreciate those those comments. Uh, we know we've got a good one, and and comments like that only further reinforce it. So, and I just want to say that Columbia Gas on the other side has been tremendous to work with. So this is my tenth year as mayor. Uh, we've had all sorts of projects that you all have done in my time, and. I can only think of one occurrence that we've had any issues and that was the specific point that you all touched on earlier. It was a project that just got done later in the year uh, that it made zero sense to plant grass seed and some other things because it wouldn't have survived anyways. And you did come back right away in the spring, you planted grass seed, you re remediated the area and, and now driving by it, you'd never know there was an issue. So we understand those things. I think it would have been a waste for everyone had you thrown down grass seed to make it look good, knowing that it never would have taken hold and you would have been doing the same thing in the spring again. So um, if that's the only complaint that we have, uh, you're doing pretty well with these projects. Appreciate that. No, thank you. Uh, Mark or Nate or Sherry, anything else that you'd like to add before we open it up for questions? Ben, I think you covered it. Um, great job in explaining the project. And again, as as Jay and Ken and Mark said, we value the relationship we have with the city of Tiffin, the open dialogue. This is how it works, how we work well together. And our goal is to just keep doing that throughout the process. And I think Ben and Mark and Jay do a great job and will continue to kind of support and answer any questions or concerns you guys would have. So thank you for um, just maintaining that positive relationship. We appreciate it. Thanks, Sherry. Okay, well, I think at this time, if we have any questions from folks, I'm happy to take them at some combination of the four of us or five of us will answer those questions. So happy to take anything at this time that folks might have. Councilman Leopard. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, ben, are, uh, is all the work going to be done by Columbia employees or are you bringing in uh, pipeline companies to help? Yeah. Yeah, Mark or Jay, I'll let one of you all touch on that if you don't mind. Yes, we'll have oversight will be by Columbia coordinators, <clears throat> Columbia personnel, but Mid Ohio Pipeline will be doing the installation and replacement of the gas lines for us as a subcontractor. And they also use a sub for install uh, paving. They'll do the hard surface. It's the same companies that performed the past projects. And uh, one other question, uh, when the customer service lines are replaced and the meters moved out to the outside foundation area of their homes, uh, whose responsibility is it for leaks between the boulevard and the meter, the boulevard shutoff and the meter? So to be sure I understand your question, the line that leads from the main from the street to the home, you're asking? Uh, from the boulevard shutoff to the meter. Okay, uh, Columbia Gas owns that. When we replace it, we take responsibility for that and that that is all taken care of by us. So it Thank is not you. the customer's responsibility, yes. Mm -hmm. Man, Steve, if, people have a, if, if people have a, um, a question or a problem about something, What's, uh, what's the chain of command? Where do they start? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think so. The, fir the first thing I like to say is 
if you're out on the project, always feel free to go out and talk to a member of the crew. I think that's a great that's a great resource, a great opportunity. We've got our coordinator Jay Zikafus will be he's not he wasn't able to join this evening, but um, he'll be down there, boots on the ground, pretty much every day. So I would say always the first first line would be to go out and talk to a member of the crew. Um, if folks if that doesn't work for someone or they want to call or email or text someone, I would say me. Um, good good uh, good you know option, and I can get in touch with Jay or. You know, if someone has something that they need to escalate or, you know, they say they talked to a member of the crew and they weren't happy or whatnot, they can reach out to me. So I think not so much a chain of command, I would say, but, you know, any combination of talking to a member of our crew or reaching out to me uh, through any Facebook, you know, email, call, text, we'll, we'll, we'll get it where it needs to go. So um, either of those two are perfectly fine. And we're always communicating back and forth, you know, with our with our teams. So I think that's that's probably the best, the best way to go about it. If that's, if that makes sense. Yeah. Where, where do they find your contact information? Yeah. What I'll do uh, after this, this, uh, this meeting is I will follow up with either uh, Mayor Mons or Dale or, and send out my contact information um, just so folks have it. And I can, if it, I could even send out kind of a, Hey, if you have questions on the project, either feel free to go out and talk to a member of the crew or, or reach out to me via X, Y, and Z. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilman Perry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Um, so would the plan be to um, to do another section of town next uh, summer as well? Or I think that's a great question for Mr. Vining, if he is able to go off mute. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, Nate, go yes, ahead. Sir. We have actually started our planning process for um, the 2022 uh, season, and there are no selected projects in Tiffin as of right now of, of this size and caliber. I think it's just, you know, important to caveat to, you know, things are always fluid, you know, and I, you know, I think that's, that's a good bet and, you know, things can change or there's a chance we could come back with another decent sized project in the future. But as Nate said, nothing on the radar for right now. Anyone else have a question? Well, thanks, Ben. The rest of your staff, we appreciate it. Very good presentation. We look forward to working with you. Mayor Montz, it's back to you. All right. Yes, thank you, Ben, and, and everyone at Columbia Gas and the project team. Uh, we appreciate it this evening. So we'll take you out of here. You can choose to hang around for the rest of our meeting, or you can depart. So no hard feelings if you don't want to listen to the, to the rest of the exciting meeting tonight. So, yeah. but you are helping keep our ratings up. So maybe you ought to stick around. Yeah. Well, thank you for having Thanks us. Everyone we appreciate it. Time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right. Now I got to get them out, find them all. And, you know, I know we talk about uh, how, how much all of us dislike these virtual meetings. Um, but one part that has been nice about it is as the presentation was going on, since I've already heard it before, I was able to coordinate me and Matt Watson, and Nick Dutro while we're talking and we've already got things in the works and it will, it will be on our website late tonight or first thing tomorrow. So the, the street paving list that Zach recommended. So uh, those are the kind of things that I guess these virtual meetings do make a little easier for all of us uh, to be able to coordinate those sorts of things. So um, but anyway, uh, appreciate Columbia Gas uh, and their investment into the community. These pipes are so much safer. They're going to last a lot longer. Um, and overall, it's just really good to see this kind of investment of infrastructure into the community. So uh, with that, we're going to talk about another kind of infrastructure. Uh, Kevin Hughes, uh, who is the superintendent of the Tiffin Water Pollution Control Center, or WPCC, as we call it uh, here at City Hall, is on his way in. and, and Kevin is going to give us an update. As you all know, uh, uh, they're wrapping up a, uh, with, with engineering and construction oversight and construction itself all in there. It's a, about a $14 million project uh, at the Water Pollution Control Center that is expanding capacity. Uh, and one of the things that we were all excited about as well is they're getting away from using chlorine uh, to, to treat the water and they're actually using UV light uh, to, to treat the water, um, or, or wastewater, I guess. Uh, so Kevin is going to talk some about the project and, and some of the recap of the past year, talk about what's going to happen this year. Uh, so Kevin is on the screen. Uh, Kevin, I'm happy to see you this evening and even happier to see you're in Ohio state colors versus those, that, that, that Michigan shirt you had on this morning. So, 
uh, very happy to see the Ohio State colors today uh, for our meetings. So he, he had to have known this was coming. Because <laughs> this is, I should have worn my Blue City shirt, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I've got mine on for you. It's like we. Oh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. This evening. So, uh, Kevin, the floor is yours. Uh, you should have screen sharing ability. So whenever you need to do it, uh, just hit it and uh, all yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, can everybody see my screen now? Yep, looks good. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to thank thank you, Aaron, for allowing me to come and do this. Uh, and thank you, City Council, too, for um, letting me come and uh, just kind of give you guys an update on what's going on at the wastewater plant. Um, to start, I know there's a lot of new council members since the last time I have done anything like this. So I kind of wanted to um, give the responsibilities of us here at the wastewater plant kind of um, go over those real quick and you know obviously job one is the daily operation of the wastewater plant uh, making sure everything's running smooth here and second we our guys also check and maintain the city's 16 different lift stations around town and third is we have the brush and leaf compost facility here that we maintain also on a daily basis um, plant staff we have myself obviously and then we have maintenance team is our electrician and mechanic we have two plant operators a lab tech and a pre-treatment coordinator or technician um, one thing i wanted to mention is you know with our guys if you go around to other wastewater plants you don't see a lot a lot of people with licenses um, usually you know plants have somebody with one or two, one or two people with licenses where everyone here has at least a class one operator license. We have three guys with class twos and two guys with class threes. So that's kind of rare and it's, it's, it's a benefit to the city and it's, it's a great benefit to me because all our guys know what's going on and they're, they're very well trained. Um, so, you know, obviously our maintenance, the mechanic and electrician, their jobs, they're pretty self-explanatory. Our plant operators, they're the ones that are opening up the plant every day, doing the rounds, going around, looking at everything, um, making sure that everything's running properly, checking motor temps um, and all the monitors around the plant. Um, then you have our pretreatment technician. His job is to work with the different restaurants and industries around town um, to make sure that they're maintaining um, their contributions to the sewer system, such as restaurants, they each have their own grease traps that they have to maintain. Um, and our pre-treatment guy goes out there and makes sure that they are keeping records and keeping those grease traps clean. Um, industries, depending on what they're manufacturing, they have different um, parameters and standards that they have to meet. Um, those are given to us by the EPA and we kind of dictate to the industries and decide which ones they need to follow based on what they're doing at their place. So, and then our lab tech, he's collecting samples from the influent of the plant and the effluent going out to the river. He's also collecting samples from the river upstream and downstream to the plant, just to make sure that we're not degrading the river in any way. Um, and everything that he tests for is in our NPDES permit. This is just a sample page from that permit. It This is 01 is our effluent, which is what's going out to the river. You can kind of see some of the parameters that we test for, discharge limitations, the measurement frequency, how often you have to do it, and what type of sample um, is needed to, to run that test. Um, so now I kind of wanted to go into a little bit of the history of the plant. Um, last year was pretty much consumed by the plant upgrade here at the plant, which you're all familiar with. Um, it started in February of last year and it's just now wrapping up. So I kind of wanted to give a background of the plant and how we got to this point. So in 1936, before we even had a wastewater plant, the, the wastewater in Tiffin was just going directly to the Sandusky River. Um, 
said he started to kind of talk about something at that point, but it wasn't until 1955 where a plant was actually constructed. It ended construction in 1956. Um, all it had was primary treatment and that's, it, it was uh, designed for, designed to be able to treat 4 million gallons up to 10 million gallons through the primary treatment. And it was based on a design year of 1990, and they anticipated that the city of Tiffin would have about 40,000 people by that time. Um, in 1968, the first upgrade to the plant was done, and that added secondary treatment, as you can see in the picture. They added three secondary settling tanks, aeration tanks, and digesters for the sludge solids handling system. That was to basically process the sludge before it was then land applied. Before this 1968 upgrade, my understanding was the sludge was basically taken and hauled just to the landfills. In 1968, once they started to treat that a little bit, um, they were able to take it and put it on fields. They also added chlorine to disinfect the water before it went into the river in the 68 upgrade. So the plant was pretty much the same then from there until about 1988. Uh, that's when the next upgrade was done. The 1988 upgrade, they added a third digester to allow to handle more solids treatment. Um, they also added chlorine building and a primary bypass tank, which basically after the, before this 88 upgrade, the plant could take 4 million gallons and everything else didn't make it to the plant. It just went out through combined sewer overflows throughout the city. So in 1988, when they added this storm tank, they were able to take between over the 4 million in the rain event up to about 18 million, they were able to at least give that water primary treatment and then discharge it to the river. So, um, then, uh, the next upgrade wasn't until this one that we recently did. And the reason we kind of came to the conclusion that was needed is, um, the city has a long-term control plan and that plan was part of that plan is to, uh, eliminate or greatly reduce the amount of combined sewer overflows. So a big part of that would be obviously to be able to treat more of the wastewater and this, this, any kind of storm events that we have. So in the beginning of last year, the project was started. We added a fourth secondary clarifier. This is actually a picture of the, of the plant completed pretty much. This is as it is today. Um, but you can see where there's a fourth secondary clarifier, which is about the same size as all three of the other secondary clarifiers combined, which is where we really got our capacity um, enlarged. We were able to treat 13 million through the plant now, as opposed to the 4 million gallons. We also added an anaerobic tank, which allows for biological nutrient removal. Before we were pretty much relying on ferrous chloride, um, the chemical to remove the phosphorus from the wastewater we're greatly reducing the amount of ferrous that we're using now because of this new addition, the anaerobic tank. And like Aaron, I heard him mention that we switched from chlorine to UV disinfection. So the chlorine's gone, the sodium thiosulfate's gone. So the three major chemicals we're using, we're just using one now and we're greatly reducing that. And we're hoping the further along we get with this new plant, we'll be able to keep reducing that ferrous chloride that we're using. So um, another part of the project, we upgraded the plant SCADA system, which is basically everything that monitors the pumps um, and everything that's going on in the plant. We can kind of look at a lot of that from one, one area in the plant instead of walking around each of it. You still have to go and check to make sure everything's running correctly, but you can control some pumps and valves from one main computer. And it allows after hours, I'm, I'm able to remotely log in and kind of view what's going on at the plan. And if we have an alarm, some of them I can acknowledge and fix from home as opposed to somebody having to 
actually come in at night and, and fix it. Uh, there were numerous amount of electrical upgrades. Um, we also replaced our generator. Um, now we're able to run the whole plant on the generator if need be, where before we would only be able to run about half of it. Um, in 2015, we did replace one of our blowers, which that we replaced one of our old blowers with a newer high efficiency blower, which dropped our so the city electric bill from about, it was a 16,000 a month on average. It went down to about 10,000 a month on average after that. And part of this project, we replaced our other old blower with another high efficiency, but smaller than the one from 15. And the first bill that we've gotten from there took it down from last year's bill at the same time, another 3000. So seeing a, a big savings as far as that goes. Um, so, you know, like I said, obviously last year was pretty much consumed by this project. So we didn't do a whole lot of projects outside of this other than just what we needed to. Um, but here's a picture of the before and after. Um, one thing that we did do last year is we rehabbed a couple of our digester roofs. This one, um, we five star maintenance came in and did, did a lot of the work, but you can kind of see on the left that before it was in pretty rough shape. It, it's one that's heated up to about 98 degrees on a regular basis. So it has a foam insulation and then another sealer on top of that. Um, so that was replaced. Um, it looks, looked pretty good, I think, where it turned out. And this one, this, this third digester is not heated, but it's, it's basically used for storage of sludge. We're able to store it and keep it, our detention times up for our biosolids before we lay and apply them. Yeah, our guys did this one by themselves. They kind of painted it and then uh, sealed it also. Um, so that was pretty much all I really had. Um, obviously, I'll take any questions that anybody might have. And I know Aaron and I had talked about a tour out here. So I'd love to have all you guys come out. Um, got some proposed dates here. I'm available in the morning, afternoon, or evening. So I don't know if you guys can talk amongst yourselves or whatever and let Aaron or Dale know and they can let me know what date you select or what time. Yeah, I think Kevin, with everybody here, it might be best if they've got their schedules with them to uh, figure out now when what date and time works best. That way uh, you can have your answer now and you can start preparing for the big tour. Okay, that's fine too. Um. How soon will you be ready for us, Kevin? Um, I'm whenever. I mean, we give, you know, we, we give tours a lot, really. So, I mean, I can give a tour anytime. Those are kind of the dates that I know Aaron and Dale and I spoke about, and I know they're free at those times. So, if you can see them still. I was, how soon how soon the rest of the council members want to go out there? I want to go out there as soon as possible because I'm, I'm excited to um, – see what's going on out there yeah that's why rich we've got june 8th 9th or 10th uh kind of set aside if council's available any of those days um i don't know what your schedules look like we did set a planning commission meeting though since this for the 8th of june at three o'clock here so that time uh, is kind of gone but i don't know if you all prefer during the day or the evening but the 10th the 10th would be great if you all were available at either uh 9 a.m uh 1 p.m 5 30 p.m yeah i'm not how many of you can make it during the day dan bridget can you I, um probably not to be just honest it would probably be hard I, how long i guess how long is yeah the, how much time would you need kevin uh we can take as much time or as, you know it probably take at least 45 minutes i would say but yeah. you know we well we could always schedule the majority of us and then any of the others could pick an alternate time that Kevin has available if they want to go out at a separate time as well. It's up to you. Yeah. Um, Danny? Yeah. If we, Barry? if we could do the um, the ninth, I'm, I know I'm off that day. I work the 10th, but that would work the best uh, for myself if it works for everybody else. Does the ninth work for everybody? 
uh, during the day, morning, 10 o'clock? Morning. Huh? Um, morning will work for me on the night. I have, a, I have a presentation I have to give at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., so I'm not available from 10 to 11 on the night. Right. Eighth and 10th are good days for me. What's that? Eighth and 10th are good days for me. Okay. Kevin, are you willing to just do two or three groups, I guess? So, I mean, I guess, can I ask the law director, if we divide into a couple of different groups and there's not a majority of council, can we do this without having a meeting and just a couple of us go through or... How 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 can how best can we do this? Yeah, the um, <clears throat> the tours are not public meetings because there is a provision in the public meeting law that allows for fact finding, um, you know, just information gathering. And that's really what they're doing is just getting an orientation, touring it. They're not. Uh, there's no discussion about uh, any city business, and so it is not technically a public meeting under the public meeting law in Ohio. Okay, great. So you said uh, June 10th, Mayor? Yeah, so I've got time on the 8th, 9th, and 10th. That's why Kevin picked those dates. It's just a couple of things have come up since uh, they were selected. I've got a three o'clock meeting on the 8th that I have to be at, and I have a presentation I have to give on the 9th at 10 a.m. Other than that, uh, I'm wide open. Other than 3 p.m. on the 8th and 10 a.m. on the 9th. How about, what about the 10th at, at uh, 10 o'clock? 10th at 10, June 10th at 10. All right. As many of you as can show up, okay. We'll be at, we'll meet out there. How's that sound? And then the rest of you that can't, um, you're welcome to reach out to Kevin if you'd like to have a tour and uh, set that up with him. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Anybody that anybody's welcome. So just give me a call. And Kevin, and I think we'll also, if you don't mind, we might invite uh, uh, Nicole Walby from the, the AT just in case she would like to attend. Um, I don't think we have anything out there that's private. She may want to take a few pictures for the public's sake just to see what's been done out of the plant. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I did I also... Quick, oh. I got a question for you, Kevin. Sure. Well, uh, what are you using the old uh, chlorine contact building for now if we don't use chlorine anymore? Um. Nothing really right now. We have a few things in there, um, but we want to uh, tear the rest of, we still have our sodium thiosulfate tanks out there. We're gonna take those out. Um, you know, we, we've discussed about possibly using that for a lab because our, our current lab is uh, the trailer that's out here, you know, and that's been in use since I think 96 or so. And that's not gonna last forever, obviously. So I, I don't know exactly what we're gonna do, but that was one thing that we discussed. Well, that I, um, I was out there the other day and kind of drove around, nobody kicked me out. Um, that you have the biggest generator I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is huge. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. It, it's, it's great. It, I mean, if we lose power, it'll switch over within seconds to generator power. Looks like we could run half the city off of it. <laughs> no, it looks great. Looks great. I'm not. I, I'm not sure exactly if people understand the complexity of uh, of uh, managing a water pollution control center uh, and the responsibility that you have. Uh, this is probably, without a doubt, the most complicated thing that the city's involved in. Uh, it's just. It's. It's quite a process. So uh, I don't think we, we uh, fully appreciate uh, everything that uh, uh, you guys are responsible for out there, but you know, you do a great job and thanks. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, we have a great group of guys out here. Um, I think they're second to none, you know, they make my job easy. And, you know, that was one thing I wanted to mention, but I kind of forgot that, you know, really over the decades that the wastewater plant's been here, I think, thanks to the leadership downtown and the people here at the plant, you know, we've been able to maintain this plant instead of starting from scratch, where if you look at other cities, even as close as Fremont and Upper Sandusky, you know, they, their plants either were just as old or not as old as ours. And they've had to build new plants, spending upwards of 60, 70 million on a new plant where, you know, we've only done a small number of upgrades in the, 
70 years and and we're able to you know treat everything that we're getting and you know it just it speaks a lot i think for the leadership downtown and the guys that have been out here for throughout the years uh councilman leopard uh thank you uh kevin did you say you can uh, now treat 14 million gallons a day 13. 13. yeah that's what the new plant design is for i i'm I'm kind of confident that I think we could treat a little bit over that, but you know, we're just still in the new stages of figuring everything out. Um, <laughs> I, I do believe that we could probably treat a little bit more. Maybe I don't know what that number would be, but what uh, I don't know what your daily usage is, but or your daily treatment is. Uh, but how much rainfall would would that include in a 24 hour period it it's really amazing how fast the flow can really jump up like just the other day we had that we had a two inch rain you know over a 12 inch or a 12 hour period you know and we had been doing about two and a half million gallons a day before that pretty consistently and by the morning after the rain when it was still raining we were treating 12 and a half million when we came in here at seven o'clock in the morning so um, it ramps up pretty quick. Uh, I, I, heard, I heard recently there was a very large water main break, and I'm sure you probably saw that as well. Um, yeah, it depends on what the flow is, you know, how, how quick we notice something like that. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions for Kevin? Councilwoman Yantuno. Thank you, Mr. President. I have two questions. Uh, Kevin you mentioned, you know, way back when the final waste went into the river and then it said that you went to the fields. Where does the final waste go now? Oh, the the solids, we still mm -hmm. land apply those to um, different different farm fields around here. Um, there's a permit, we have to have fields approved and we test our, our solids monthly and every time we get ready to land apply we have to have the soil soil sampled and tested and our solids sampled and tested to make sure that we're not adding too much nitrogen to those farm fields but that's where it still goes and we have our own semis we have our own egg cam we have our own tractor where we load our trucks and um we I, I mean the city's been doing that since i think the late 60s like i mentioned and um yeah so it it's a lot better than in my opinion it's a lot better than taking it to the landfill or you know there are other cities that pay other municipalities to take it and then they either further process it or they land apply it themselves it's quite the process and i know my other question is i noticed that every your crew is very job specific and so are they cross <coughs> Over since you are job specific out there? Yes. Um, other than our electrician, um, you know, he's the only one that really does a lot of, does all the electrical work. But uh, other than that, you know, all of our guys are able to do the basics in the lab or do the basics as, a, as an operator. Good. Thank you. Anyone else have a question for Kevin? Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Kevin. Great presentation. We look forward to seeing you on the 10th at 10 in the morning. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank Back you, to you, Mayor. Uh, that, uh, that completes my report. I appreciate Kevin joining us this evening uh, to give his annual update and all the hard work that goes in out there. And I think uh, it was said very well, Rich, when, when you talked about that they've got some of the most complicated jobs in the city. I don't think anyone quite understands the process behind treating all of that uh, sewage and everything else that goes into the sewer. And, uh, you know, Kevin, while you're here, maybe this is a great time for you to give a, a shameless plug for how you always tell us how a lot of things that say they're flushable really aren't, and they cause all the problems with the sewer. I don't know if you'd seen, there's a city over in uh, England that is facing a blockage in their sewer 
that, uh, God, what, what did they say the measurement was? And it's going to cost, I forget how many million dollars to remove this blockage. And it's all from what are flushable wipes and things like that, that are not really flushable. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are the main thing. Yeah. These wipes that, you know, they'll say right on the package that they're flushable, but they're not, they're not biodegradable. They don't break down in the sewers. You know, they, like toilet paper will actually break down in the water where these don't. And they just, you know, they, you could just have a couple of them start one big plug and um, you know, they're, they're a nightmare when it comes to the city's lift stations, because nine out of 10 times when you have a pump that's plugged on a lift station, it's, it's because of these wipes and obviously grease, but um, most residents don't do, don't pour enough grease down their drains to really cause a problem. But but yeah, the wipes are, they're something else. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a community of, you know, when college is in session, 21, 22,000 people, and people are flushing wipes and, and grease and paint and things down there. And unfortunately, the, the manufacturer says they're flushable. And just because it gets from your line to the main line doesn't mean it ends up in a happy place. And that's what you, I think, deal with all the time. A lot of your late night calls and pump failures and, and lift station problems are due, due to what the manufacturer labels as flushables and truly aren't. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anything else for Kevin? All right. Well, Kevin, enjoy uh, the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. President, um, that uh, concludes my report this evening, unless there are any uh, follow-up questions. Does anyone have any questions for the mayor? I don't see any hands going up. You're off the hook, Mayor. All Thank right. you. Thank you. All right, next, uh, Clerk of Council, Ann Forrest. No report tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Director of Finance, Kathy Kaufman. Thank you, Mr. President. I have the financial report for April 2021. Total receipts for the month, $4,781,522.30. Total expenses, $3,341,773.28. General Fund's unencumbered balance is $3,608,524.67. Income tax receipts for April 2021 were $1,063,507.44. When comparing that to April of 2020, we were up $219,430. And year to date, we are up with income tax receipts 9.43%. So going, going really well right now. The portion that we put of income tax receipts into <coughs> fund 215 for the 0.25% uh, income tax was $130,779.84. The unexpended balance for all funds is $29,546,894.32, which matches the bank balances for the same time period. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for the finance director? Seeing none, Councilman Gilling. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. I would uh, so move to approve the finance director's report as presented, along with the bank reconciliation, which we did receive via email earlier this afternoon. Thank you. We have a motion to accept the finance director's uh, report and the bank reconciliation. Or second, Councilman, Councilwoman Boyle. Yes, thank you. I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any Further discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Director of Law, Brent T. Howard. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, a couple items this evening. Um, first uh, on your agenda is uh, third reading for three ordinances uh, that are involved the vacation of either an alley or streets. They are ordinances number 21-29, 21-30, and 21-31. Uh, 
Um, the procedure for these uh, ordinances leading up to the third reading is in addition to your review uh, and hearing, they also are submitted to the county um, tax map office for review and the county recorder's office to obtain the recording fees for the documents. And then also the county auditor's office to mm -hmm. determine transfer fees. Um, so that all takes a little bit of time because these ordinances are recorded because they become part of the permanent land records for the, uh, the county and uh, the city records that are kept uh, in uh, the county recorder's office. Um, with that information, we uh, contact the petitioners and the petitioners then know what the amounts that they need to pay since they petitioned the city for the vacation is to their benefit. And if on approval, they will be recorded at cost of the petitioner. Um, all of those uh, individuals have been, ass uh, they've assured us that they will pay their, um, their recording fees promptly. Um, in a couple of the cases, 21-30 uh, and 21-31, they involve uh, development projects. And um, so in order to avoid any delay in those projects, um, it's my recommendation that even though we have not received payment, um, we, they didn't have uh, too many days uh, since they've received the notice of the cost that I would suggest and recommend to council that you proceed to approve the, um, the ordinances tonight at third reading. They won't become effective for 30 days. So we'll make sure that the, um, the fees are paid um, within the 30 day period. And of course they will not be recorded in the recorder's office until the fees are received. So I wanted to let you know the process and my recommendation that you proceed with um, consideration of all three ordinances this evening. Any questions about that item before I move on to a next item? Okay, the next item is the Charter Review Commission. Um, as you know, um, they are nearing the end of their work and they have scheduled two meetings in the month of May. Uh, the first meeting is May 13th, which is a Thursday evening, six o'clock uh, via Zoom. And the second meeting is May 26th, which is a Wednesday evening at six o'clock, uh, also via Zoom. The next meeting on the 13th, um, it is the, the substance of, for that meeting is to have a continued discussion on um, a couple items in the, um, in, um, in the code, in the charter. One is to um, confirm several areas of the charter where um, notices will be done by um, using the city website. Um, you um, may know that uh, when it comes to um, notices, we typically have provided notices via the newspaper. And we'll continue to do that um, as long as there is a newspaper of general circulation in the city. But to modernize uh, the, uh, the charter, we're also providing for an alternative, you know, a, 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 another way and a, uh, of course, a very commonly used way is to provide notice on the city website. So for example, when an, an ordinance is approved, um, the full text of the ordinance will be on the city's website um, for uh, the, the knowledge of the, the general public. Um, also, when there is a uh, codification um, that we do almost annually of the, the, uh, the city code, um, again, it will be uh, published by posting on the city's website, in addition to being published in the newspaper. Um, the Charter Review Commission, you may recall that there is a notice put in the newspaper to obtain um, people uh, interested in uh, running for the Charter Review Commission. Well, we know people look at the newspaper, but they also look at the city website. So that is another area that will be added. Um, there's also for um, the city's uh, contracting, um, when we put out notices to advertise for uh, bidding, uh, the thought is that we should provide um, additional ways to attract bidders for public contracts. 
Again, we would use uh, the city website. Um, finally, uh, there is a, a provision in the city recall section, recalling um, elected officials. And um, um, the uh, election uh, will be posted on the city's website. And so there's several areas where we're kind of um, increasing the, um, the awareness of um, city business by using the city's website. So it's gonna be an important tool going forward. I believe that all those provisions will be approved by the Charter Review Commission. And you'll, um, you'll get to see um, those in more detail once they're submitted to you. Um, a couple of the other items that um, the commission will consider at their next meeting. And that is in the um, section 8.02, which deals with the city's contracts. Um, we um, are um, um, looking at uh, adding a provision which will um, clarify, confirm that the city um, is not only using the traditional um, contracting method of finding a, a contractor through a bidding process, but you may know that um, in the last 10 years, state law has provided for several other different types of construction delivery methods. For example, uh, there is a, a, a construction manager at risk method for building a public improvement. You may recall that uh, the, the city and the county used that process to build the Justice Center. Um, that did not exist that um, by statute, that process did not exist um, 10 years ago um, or back in 2010 uh, during the time and 11 while the uh, Charter Review Commission was uh, reviewing the charter at that time. There are also a couple other methods that are now allowed by public entities. And we want to incorporate um, through kind of modernizing, if you will, that section of the code so that uh, the city has the ability explicitly to um, use any um, a statutory construction method that is available. Um, as we've talked several times in the commission meeting, let's keep our uh, toolkit as, as uh, large as possible for the city so that depending on the type of public improvement, it may be appropriate to use one of these uh, newer uh, methods of finding the, uh, the appropriate um, contractor to perform the work. And Finally, um, there will be some discussion about the nomination and election process um, for um, uh, city elected officials. You may know that uh, 10 years ago, uh, there were significant changes to this section. The, um, we went in, from a partisan primary process to an open primary where um, any voter could vote for any um, uh, elect uh, any uh, um, candidate in a primary, uh, regardless of party affiliation. We are a little unique in that we are, it's not a totally nonpartisan because you uh, candidates in the, the party uh, or in the nominating election in the spring can um, put their party affiliation next to their name. But again, it's open so that um, you can be from either party and vote for any candidate. That will continue. I don't think, expect any changes with that. But we do want to um, um, make some minor changes to that process. Um, namely, um, we want to clarify how do write-in candidates participate in the election process. Um, also, um, there's questions about how do we uh, properly replace a, a vacancy of a candidate during the election process, either through the death of a candidate, um, a candidate withdraws, um, or possibly a candidate becomes disqualified for some reason to run. Um, so we're looking at uh, state law and then deciding how much do we um, adopt that or possibly use um, some uh, specific provisions in our charter for uh, replacing a, a candidate during the process. We also want to um, confirm that this is a nonpartisan uh, primary process that we have. Again, only with the, um, the uh, party affiliation if a candidate would choose. But other than that, it is a nonpartisan process. And um, generally, there have been very positive comments uh, regarding the process. 
So I wanted to give you the, the substance of kind of what the next meeting will be about and your, uh, you and um, council members and uh, the public are um, invited to uh, join that meeting. After the 13th, then on the 26th, it's hopeful that there will be a, a final report, a written report that will go um, topic by topic uh, of these items that I've, I discussed and the other items that over the last uh, eight or nine months that the, the commission has reviewed. They'll put that um, report in writing. They will adopt that report on the 26th, and then it will be submitted to you um, for your first review um, at the council meeting, first meeting um, in June. And uh, it would be um, then appropriate sometime uh, probably later that month when you get an opportunity to review that to have a committee of the whole to uh, review the proposal, invite um, a couple representatives from the Charter Review Commission to come and um, um, uh, present uh, the report and then also to answer any questions that, uh, um, that uh, you may have. So that gives you um, a little rundown of uh, the commission's work to finish their work in the next month. Um, are there any questions about um, the Charter Review Commission? Seeing none, thank you. And that uh, concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Law Director. Um, we're now under written communications. Thank you, Mr. President. I have finance director's request for legislation number F21-16 to amend the 2021 budget ordinance 21-11 to appropriate funds into the parks department budget for $1,500. Finance director's request for legislation F21-16 will be held on file in the clerk's office. Ordinance 21-40 has been prepared for tonight's meeting. Finance Director's Request for Legislation, number F21-17 to amend the 2021 Budget Ordinance 21-11 to appropriate funds into the Engineer's Capital Improvement Budget in the amount of $5,000. Finance Director's Request for Legislation F21-17 will be held on file in the Clerk's Office. Ordinance 21-42 has been prepared for tonight's meeting. Well, we also have the Charter Review Commission's letter uh, 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 request a request regarding powers, duties, and functions of the Parks and Recreation Board. The Charter Review Commission's uh, request will be referred to the Recreation and Public Property Committee. And then we have the annual notice from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control that is given to the legislative authorities uh, regarding objections to renewal of a liquor permit. The uh, notice from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control will be referred to the Street Sidewalk and Sewer Committee. And that concludes the written communications. Thank you. Uh, we are now under oral communications. Anyone uh, wishing to address council from the public can do so by... <clears throat> raising their hand, pushing the button, and I'll let the mayor fill in the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you only have to say that one more time after tonight, aren't you happy? <laughs> uh, anyone from the attending public uh, who is on here who wishes to address council, ask a question, et cetera, um, please use the raise hand button. Depending on your device, it will either be at the bottom of your screen or the top of your screen, it says raise hand. Uh, just press it and we will bring you in one at a time to uh, speak. So now would be the time if you want to speak to press raise hand. And I do not see any hands, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're now under motions. Are there any motions? We're under resolutions. Mr. President, you have a hand raised. I'm sorry, Councilman Jones. Oh, um, yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I would make a motion to amend Ordinance 21-22, approving hazardous related payments due to the COVID-19 pandemic to $1,625 to all 
full-time city employees and half of that amount for the part-time employees versus the way it's presented. We have a motion to uh, amend ordinance 21-22 to um, change the amount of pay 1625 to full-time employees and half that amount to part-time employees. Is there a second to the motion? Seeing no second, the motion dies. Now we're under resolutions. Resolution number 21-8, resolution, ex uh, I'm sorry, introduced by Don Yanachuno. Resolution accepting the recommendation of the Tax Incentive Review Council to continue certain tax incentive agreements with local businesses and property owners and declaring an emergency. This is the thir third reading of, or of excuse me, of resolution 21-8. Councilwoman Yanatuno. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask for immediate passage of resolution 21-8. We have a motion for immediate passage of resolution 21-8. Is there a second? Councilman Gilling. I'd like to second the motion, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Councilwoman Yanatuno. This is a procedure we do every year. It, it, it's just a formality. Thank you. Anyone else? And I'll ask the clerk to call the vote, please, on the passage. Uh, Mr. President, it has an emergency. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, we'll vote on the uh, emergency. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry? Yes. Boyle? Yes. Gillig? Yes. And Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Leopard? Yes. The emergency passes with a vote of seven to nothing, uh, seven to zero, and we will now vote on the passage. Councilman Perkins? Yes. Perry? Yes. Boyle? Yes. Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Leopard. Yes. Resolution 21-8 passes with a vote of seven to zero. We're now under ordinances. Ordinance number 21-22 introduced by Daniel Perry. Ordinance approving hazard pay related to the COVID-19 pandemic for city employees, amending the 2021 budget to appropriate funds for the cost of the hazard pay and declaring an emergency. This is the third reading of ordinance 21-22. Councilman Perry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for passage of ordinance 21-22. We have a motion for the immediate passage of ordinance 21-22. Is there a second? Councilman Leopard. I'll second the motion, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I talked on the first reading, I talked on the second reading, and I think I did, but trying to get my point across, even though law director said the city can do it, I just doesn't sit well with me treating city employees in two different classes. Uh, not one person in the second ward has contacted me on this issue. Either they don't know about it, don't care about it. Since no one in the second ward contacted myself, I guess they elected me to uh, speak for them. So I will be a no vote on ordinance 21-22. Is there any other discussion, comments? Seeing none, I'll ask the uh, clerk to call the vote on the emergency, please. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? No. And Leopard? Yes. The emergency passes with a vote of six to one. We will now vote on the passage. Councilman Perkins? Yes. Perry? Yes. Boyle? Yes. Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? No. And Leopard? Yes. Ordinance 21 22 passes with a vote of six to one.
Ordinance number 21-29 introduced by Steve Leppard. Ordinance responding to petition number 104, vacating the alley between Wall Street and Sean Avenue running north from 2nd Avenue in the 2nd Ward of the city of Tippin, Ohio. This is the third reading of, or of Ordinance 21-29. Mr. President? Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me, it's an amended ordinance, I should clarify. Okay. This is the third reading of amended ordinance 21-29. Councilman Leppard. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would ask for passage of ordinance number 21-29. We have a motion to pass ordinance 21-29. Is there a second? Councilwoman Boyle. Yes, I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I know I participated and I get accused of not listening, but what was the amendment to 21 days 29? I didn't dig out the other version and compare it to this version. Law director. What was the amendment? Yeah, yeah. And, and this is the answer for um, ordinances 21 29, 30, and 31. Um, the, the amendment was the new Exhibit A. It, and it did not change the location. What it did was for all those um, exhibit A's, we added information that the county auditor and tax map wanted in order to clarify the transfer of adjacent property for tax purposes and, and, and a, a, a description of the area. But the map you know, was still the same location. It's just for recording and transfer purposes. They gave us some additional information after it was introduced, but before the second reading. Okay, thank you. That exhibit A uh, helped out quite a bit. Thanks for explanation. Um, any other comments or discussion? Seeing none, I'll, I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on the passage, please. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. And Leopard. Yes. Ordinance 21 29 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Amended ordinance number 21-30 introduced by Stephen Leopard. Ordinance responding to petitions number 105 and number 106 vacating South Street and Orchard Street running southwest from Euclid Avenue in the third ward of the city of Tiffin, Ohio. This is the third reading of amended ordinance 21-30. Councilman Leopard. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd ask for passage of ordinance number 21-30. We have a motion for uh, passage of ordinance 21-30. Is there a second? Councilman Jones. I would like to second that, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk. Oh, wait a minute. Councilman Leopard. I'm just, I just wanted to comment that I'm happy to see uh, uh, some construction go on for housing purposes. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Um, any, anyone else? I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on the passage, please. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Mr. Gillig. You're muted, Ben. There. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, Yanatuno. Yes. Jones? Yes. And Leopard? Yes. Amended ordinance 21 30 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Amended ordinance number 21 31, introduced by Stephen Leopard. Ordinance responding to petition number 107, vacating North Street, running southwest from Elwood Street between East Davis Street and Douglas Street in the second ward of the city of Tiffin, Ohio. This is the third reading of ordinance 21-31. Councilman Leopard. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would ask for passage of ordinance number 21-31. We have a motion for passage of ordinance 21-31. Is there a second? Councilman Perry. Yeah, I'd like to second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Leopard. 
Uh, this ordinance uh, also will uh, create new housing opportunities on a smaller scale. Thank you. Anyone else? I ask the clerk to call the vote on the passage, please. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. And Leopard. Yes. Ordinance twenty-one thirty-one passes with a vote of seven to zero. Ordinance number twenty-one thirty-two introduced by Steve Leopard. Ordinance approving the removal of a of traffic of a traffic signal. I'm sorry, an installation of stop signs at the intersection of Circular and Main Streets within the city. This is the second reading of Ordinance twenty-one thirty-two. Ordinance number 21-33, introduced by Steve Leppard, ordinance approving the removal of a traffic signal and installation of stop signs at the intersection of Circular and Melmore Streets within the city. This is the second reading of Ordinance 21-33. Ordinance number 21-34, introduced by Steve Leppard, ordinance approving the removal of a traffic signal and installation of stop signs at the intersection of North Sandusky and Hall Streets within the city. This is the second reading of ordinance 21-34. Ordinance number 21-35 introduced by Steve Leppard, ordinance approving the removal of a traffic signal and installation of stop signs at the intersection of Coe and Jefferson streets within the city. This is the second reading of ordinance 21-35. Ordinance number 21-36 introduced by Ben Gillig, an ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of $3,155,000 of notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of improving Progress Parkway and Fair Lane between certain termini and adjacent city property by grading, draining, curbing, paving, constructing sidewalks, curb ramps, sanitary sewers, water lines and storm sewers, and stormwater detention basins and installing and improving catch basins, fire hydrants, manholes, street lighting and traffic signs, signals and signalization where necessary in each case together with the necessary appurtenances and work incidental thereto, including certain related and required improvements to US Route 224, County Roads 1 and 54 and Township Road 18 and acquiring real estate and interest in real estate in connection therewith and declaring an emergency. This is the second reading of ordinance 21-36. Ordinance number 21-39 introduced by Steve Leppard, ordinance authorizing city administrator to prepare plans and specifications, advertise for and receive bids and recommend and execute a contract for the construction of a pavement project of portions of Hudson Street, Oak Street, North Monroe Street, Franklin Street, Clyde Street and Ash Street and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading of ordinance 21-39. Councilman Leppard. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would ask for the suspension of City Council's three reading rule and immediate passage of ordinance number 21-39. We have a we have a motion to suspend council's three reading rule and immediate passage of ordinance 21-39. Is there a second? Councilwoman Boyle. I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Leppard. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. This is a Ohio Public Works Commission grant that uh, the city applied for last year. Um, we have a deadline looming uh, in the very near future. And uh, early bidding has already produced tremendous results for the city in getting our streets paved in a very timely manner. And uh, we believe that early building early bidding may reduce uh, may reduce price and also uh, get our streets paved 60 to 90 days sooner. Very good. Anyone else? I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on a suspension, please. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? 
Yes. And Leopard. Yes. The suspension passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the emergency. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. And Leopard. Yes. The emergency passes with a vote of seven to zero. We will now vote on the passage. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. And Leopard. Yes. Ordinance 21 39 passes with a vote of seven to zero. Ordinance number 21 40 introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance amending 2021 budget ordinance number 21 11 to appropriate a reimbursement of $1,500 from the Tiffin Seneca Public Library for the storybook trail into the Tiffin Parks and Recreation Department budget. This is the first reading of Ordinance 21 40. Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask for suspension of Council's three reading rule and immediate passage of Ordinance 21 40. We have a motion to suspend Council's three reading rules, three reading rule and the immediate passage of Ordinance 21 40. Is there a second? Councilman Perkins. I'd like to second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Gillig. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. This is just reimbursement. Uh, for the neat storybook trail that was just put into Shekelhoff Park. And we're just wanting to get that money back into the parks budget. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on a suspension, please. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gilly. Yes. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. And Leopard. Yes. The suspension passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Perry. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. And Leopard. Yes. Ordinance 21 40 passes with a vote of seven to zero. Ordinance number 21-41 introduced by Steve Leppard. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept a permanent easement from TMP 447 LLC and or Tiffin Metal Investments LLC or current property owner on or near 401 and 447 Wall Street for storm and sewer purposes and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading of ordinance 21-41. Ordinance number 21-42 introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance amending 2021 budget ordinance number 21-11 to appropriate $5,000 into the engineer's capital improvement budget to replace its large format plotter. This is the first reading of ordinance 21-42. Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request suspension of our three reading rule and immediate passage of ordinance 21-42. We have a motion to suspend council's uh, three reading rule and the immediate passage of ordinance 21-42. Is there a second? Councilman Perry. Yeah, I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Gillig. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So I received uh, an email from engineer Watson. So as you imagine, it's, it's perfectly detailed and well thought out. <laughs> Uh, the plotter was purchased in 2014 for just over $10,000. Uh, it has stopped working. Uh, the lifespan is typically five to seven years, so the uh, technology to fix it is obsolete. Uh, however, um, technology and cost has improved significantly, um, so we will basically be able to upgrade uh, our plotter uh, for $5,000 and it would apparently cost just about that much to replace an older model that isn't really in service anymore. So pretty good deal for the city. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on a suspension, please. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Terry. Yes. 
Boyle. Yes. Gillig? Yes. Danatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Leopard? Yes. The suspension passes with a vote of seven to zero. We will now vote on the passage. Councilman Perkins? Yes. Harry? Yes. Boyle? Yes. Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Leopard? Yes. Ordinance 21-42 passes with a vote of seven to zero. That concludes the ordinances, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, those are all the items on our agenda. We're now under the good of the order. Is there anything for the good of the order? Uh, Councilman Leppard. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to announce a street sidewalk and sewer committee meeting to be held Thursday at 1 p.m. May 6th by a Zoom. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss the repair of collapsed sewers on Ann Street and Bryden Road and its budgeting, and also to discuss uh, uh, liquor permit renewal objections. Uh, what time did you say it was, Steve? And any other business may come before the uh, committee. 1 p.m. 1? 1 p.m. via Zoom. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Councilman Perry. Yeah, um, all the other uh, council members uh, got paired up with other cool council members and I got stuck with Bridget to tour the uh, sewer uh, treatment plant. I was wondering if we could do some switching around or something where I can get someone else maybe. Well, you go uh, out there by yourself. How's that? Maybe, yeah, yeah that huh? sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> um, if anybody should be switching, it's me. <laughs> You're welcome. I want that noted in the minutes. Uh, Anne, if you could uh, put that in there. <laughs> Anyone else? Anybody else that doesn't want to hang out with a fellow council member? <laughs> All right. There's no other comments. Uh, we'll adjourn the meeting. And uh, God bless all of you. And have a good rest of your night and a good week. Uh, next Monday at 430, committee of the whole meeting via Zoom. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Love you, Bridget. <laughs>